Hi, welcome back to my channel again. Um, just wanted to tell you about a dream I had, and it's been some time now since I had this dream. I'd say maybe within the last couple of years I had it, and I'm just now getting around to telling you about it. I actually recorded a video about it yesterday, but I, I was out in my car and trying to <laughs> order food and all that. It just was a mess. So, Anyhow, I thought I'd just do this when I was focused. My son is at group right now. They give me word that he may get out this Thursday, so I'm so happy to finally, you know, be going home and not have to be spread so thin between home and, and here at the hospital, trying to give myself to all my babies and my mom and my family, that my, my household. Um, so, um, God is good. I had this dream where I was at this, um, if, you, if you ever thought that God wasn't with you or that you were outnumbered, by the circumstances of life or outnumbered by your enemies, just remember this dream and more importantly, the scripture that coincides with this because the Lord allows me to dream scripture. Sometimes I don't realize it until after the dream. He'll give me the revelation of what I saw or the interpretation. And I did get a message. One of my subscribers sent me a message. I did get your message and I will respond to you as soon as I can because I, I, that was powerful what you shared with me. Um, but I had this dream that I was in this wilderness area and off to the I was with these scientists or archaeologists or something there were just a few of us a handful of us and off in the distance was um, this group of men they all were wearing white like white uniforms I can't remember now if they were pants or robes but there was there was a spectacular brilliance about their outfits they had this glow to them unlike anything I've ever seen in this world and the best the closest I could describe it to was like the light of the moon how it has that iridescent type glow, but there was an iridescence to them, and it wasn't like a light bulb or any natural man-made light, and they all were standing there, they weren't talking to one another, they had very um, sober looks on their faces, and they all were just waiting for something, we didn't know what, but it was so fascinating just to see them here in the middle of this wilderness area, just, no, there's a hill behind them, and then just flat land for miles around, so we were watching for a while, and then we kind of you know, started getting back to what we were there for. And hours later, like, we checked back every now and then, we look at them, they were still there. And so hours later, finally, I think I was reaching down on the ground for something. I think we were going to pack up to start heading home. But I looked, and I said, hey, guys, look, there, there's something happening over there. They're moving. And I looked, and they all were, like, standing at attention. They all put their shoulders back, and they all started turning and facing one direction as if they had been given orders. And all of a sudden, they bent their bodies all the way back. Like, I can't go back the, as far as they did, but they bent their bodies almost practically in half. And they all opened their mouths in unison. Hallelujah. I'm listening to this worship music that's just got me in third heaven right now. I've been listening to this pretty much through the night. I, I went, dozed off, woke up, put it on again, and I've just been in tears because anointing is so strong with this music. Um, I'll get back to the group. I'll tell you about the group at the end of the video, but... Um, but yeah, they all let out this, they opened their mouth, and it's like they started yelling, and it, we couldn't hear what they were saying, but I bet it was glorious if we could hear it. And they let out this loud yell, this loud shout, and I don't know, the best way I could describe it would seem like it was maybe a war cry, and it fits, because the next scene after that, it's like I saw a camera, and it panned all the way over to the left, and there was a battle that was ensuing, it had just gotten started, and there were Christians against demons, and the demons looked like regular men, but in, and it was clear cut in the dream that these were Christians that were fighting demons, and they were in the appearance of men, and uh, huh, for a wrestle not against flesh and blood, glory to God, he just revealed that to me, but um, the Christian guys, you could tell, were kind of nervous, there were just a few of them, compared to the demons that they were going to be fighting, and they were a little nervous, um, and it seems like they weren't prepared, but they were like, we're going to go do this anyway, you know, it's just a few of us, but we're going to do this anyway, and they went out there, and um, all of a sudden, the demons came aggressively, and the Christian guys were like, we're going to take the stand, they were, there was some, some nerves there, they were a little nervous, but they had some courage as well, and they took what courage they had, and they were going to fight with that, and right when the demons were charging towards them, looking like men, angels came, those, that group, was, there were angels, they came out of nowhere, and just immediately they were there on the scene, they were at their, by their side, at their aid, sent to help them, and they came with such force, like one of the angels took his hand and just literally knocked a guy down, like knocked knock one of the demons down to the ground, and another, and, and the, the thing is, the, Christ, the Christian guys, like one of them got ready to 
fire his gun when the angel came and like stepped in between these two Christian guys were like side by side the angel came right between the, t the two of them and just like knocked him down with force and the demon went down and then another one the demon was coming towards him and the Christian guy was trying to get to fire his weapon and it got stuck and then he looked up at the demon and he was like like oh my gosh and he looked at the weapon and then the angel came and stepped in and, and the demon guy thought he had him and he smiled and pointed his weapon at his face it's like a shotgun they remind me of old-fashioned weapons like bayonets and things that you'd see in the Civil War era. Even their uniforms were reminiscent of something you'd see back then. And so the gun malfunctioned, and then um, all of a sudden when the angel came, he knocked that, shook the gun out of the demon's hand, threw it away, and then knocked him down. And the demon first was like this, and then he looked up at the angel, and the angel slew him. And then the Christian guy was like, like you know, he dropped his gun, and he was like, like where did that, what happened? Where did that come from? And then next to him, the same thing happened. Another demon guy came up to the Christian guy, and he came up to him too quickly for him to get his weapon prepared to aim at him. And then the, his gun, the demon guy's gun, started malfunctioning and wouldn't work. And then he was looking at the gun like, what happened? And then the angel took it and knocked him out. And it's like he was just, this was like the most, it was a very intense battle. But the help that came, the Christian guy, the one that was spared, the two that were spared were looking at each other like, huh? Like, well, did you, like I didn't do this. What, what, what's happening? They couldn't see the angels. And so the, the angels were just coming through with force, knocking them down one right after the other. And before you knew it, the battle was won. And there were no more demons. They had been defeated. And the Christian guys all, at one point, they just all kind of just started, like, banding together. They started backing up together, like, we don't have to do anything. All we have to do is watch this fight. Okay, I found the scripture where the verse was, um, the scripture that coincides with the dream that I had about there are more who are for you than are against you. It's found in the book of Second Kings, chapter 6, and it's basically when the Syrians, the king of Syria, was planning an attack. It says he was making war against Israel, and he consulted with his servants and said where his camp would be set up. He was making secret plans in his chambers, or his bedroom, and um, the, the Spirit of the Lord gave wisdom and to Elijah about this plan. Uh, Elisha caught wind of this plan by the Holy Spirit, and um, and he started telling the king of, of Israel about it. And <laughs> the king was wondering, how is it that um, Elisha, or who who's telling my, like basically who's giving up the goods, who's telling my business? Like what I'm saying in the bedroom, how is it possible that the king of Israel is hearing about this? And um, the king of Syria's servants told him that Elisha is responsible for that, the prophet Elisha. So um, they ended up in verse 14. It says, Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. I guess they thought they were going to plan a stealth attack. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounded the, surrounding the city with horses and chariots, and his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? And sometimes when you're surrounded by trouble, you're bombarded by the attack of the enemy, you seem surrounded on all sides, and you wonder, well, what are we going to do? Well, verse 16, it says, So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Verse 17, And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Strike this people, I pray, with blindness. And he struck them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. Isn't that powerful? According to the word of a man, let it be according to your faith. Verse 19, now Elisha said to them, This is not the way, nor is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. So it was when they had come to Samaria that Elisha said, o Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw. And they and there they were inside Samaria. <laughs> and then from that point on, um, it says the, the Syrians came no more into the land of, of Israel to attack them. And that um, and God was merciful to them because uh, when the king of Israel saw them, he said to Elisha, My father, shall I kill them? Shall I kill them? And he answered, No, you shall not kill them. Would you kill those whom you have taken captive with your sword and your bow? Set food and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. Then he prepared a great feast for them, his enemies, and after they ate and drank, he sent them away, and they went to their master. And the bands of Syrian raiders came no more into the land of Israel. Wasn't God merciful that he allowed Elisha and the king of Israel to prepare a feast for the enemy? Um, my how the tables were turned. And there's another scripture that... Um, story here where the angels actually smote or they killed so many thousands, hundreds of thousands of men in the camp 
of the enemy one night where the children of Israel didn't even have to fight. But I just wanted to share that with you, just to encourage you that if you ever think you're alone or you're outnumbered, that the Lord always has help, unseen help that you cannot see. He dispatches his angels. It says, For he shall give his angels charge over me, to keep, uh, over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in thy, in thy hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. So they're, they're around us. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about those that fear him. So never be afraid. God is with you. He's on your side. And remember that, that he is always there. He's the God of angel armies, the, the host of heavenly hosts. He's the God that's in charge of this heavenly host. And he will send them to our aid when the time is needed. Just call upon him. If you don't know him, get to know him. Give your life to him. He died for you. He didn't have to do that, but he loved you so much. You're so precious to him. Every human life is valuable. There's not one life that's not valuable, no matter what you've done, no matter what your background is, or if you think you're too far from God, or even if you know God and you walked away from him, and you think that the Lord doesn't want to hear you because of your sins. I've been there, and the Lord has shown me, no, no, no. That's when you run to the throne of grace, and you ask for my forgiveness, and I will abundantly pardon you, and I'll wrap my arms around you like the prodigal son, and take you in as my own again. God bless you. Thanks for watching.